looking for, where everyone in the battle space has an equal picture. Even before he was president, Donald Trump uh, started to put some pressure on the F-35 program, uh, said that there should be a competition between a similar, uh, a comparable version of the F-18. Uh, there are a lot of experts who say that there isn't a comparable version of the F-18 extant right now. But talk to us a little bit about the competition between these two aircraft. Um, you know, you were part of those discussions. You were part of those meetings. Talk to us a little bit about what this means, what it does it mean for the program, you know, and what's the business case you're making in this competition for the F-35 to, to win, uh, win the argument at the end of the day? Yeah, first and foremost, I'm not a salesman for the F-35. So um, what the department decides in terms of quantities of their airplanes, um, my job is to just run the best program I can, no matter how many F-35s they choose to buy. But relative to um, the comparison between the F-18 and the F-35, one thing was clear in our conversations with the new administration, as well as within the department um, with uh, some of the new folks coming on, is that you cannot replace an F-35 with even the most advanced version of a Super Hornet when you're at the high-end fight. It just can't, it, it just doesn't work. Um, there's great things you can do to a, a Hornet, a Super Hornet, to make it better, but you can't get it to do the things that the F-35 does today. Everybody realizes that. That's why when people talk about the competition between the Super Hornet and the F-35, um, we all look, including the Navy, and say, we think those airplanes are complementary. They're not in competition with, you, with each other. Um, as I talked about before, how an F-35 can make other airplanes smarter, in the same way a Super Hornet and an F-35 flying together are a very, very viable and a very, very good combination of airplanes. And that's what the Navy's plan has always been over the next two decades, to put on their large deck carriers a combination of advanced Super Hornets and F-35s that could work together um, to bring the fight to the enemy. So when we look at it and when I look at it, I don't look at it as an either or for the Navy. I look at it as how many airplanes can they afford to buy of both. Um, the other thing that was very clear that we made to the administration was even if an advanced Super Hornet was getting to be near on par with an F-35, an advanced Super Hornet can't replace the A model and it cannot replace the B model. It can't replace the A model because the U.S. Air Force is going to buy you know, 1,763 of them, they've never had a Super Hornet in their inventory, and that just doesn't make sense. Uh, for the B model, unless you can build a Super Hornet that can go up and down and, and land vertically on a small deck carrier, it's not going to replace a B model. So everybody is very clear in, in understanding that what we're really talking about is an advanced Super Hornet and that mix of airplanes with an F-35C. And I believe the Navy has been very forthright with the Congress and the administration saying, look, in the future, in the next uh, two decades, we're looking to have two squadrons of F-35s and two squadrons of advanced Super Hornets on the deck at any one time. Now, over time, those Super Hornets, even the advanced versions, are not going to be viable in the next 25, 30, 40 years. So they've got to look at putting more F-35s or maybe even a sixth-generation airplane uh, in, in the future out there. So, so for us, it, it is not a matter of one versus the other, a zero-sum game. It's a matter of if the, if the U.S. government can afford it, the Navy needs tactical fighters, and they'd like to buy both F-35s and advanced Super Hornets. Let's go to the cost.